Now we're going to simplify algebraic fractions with factor. There's a big difference between with factoring and without factoring. Once I have something like this, if you see I have plus and minus between terms, I have terms. We can't do it the same way we do this one. This is what we just did. If I have no sign in between my letters or my variables, a times is understood. So, we are allowed to cancel just like we did. We subtract exponents and put the variable where the higher exponent is. So, I'm going to get x cubed in the numerator. I'm going to get y squared in the denominator. I will probably say this a ton of times. When I cancel, I can cancel factors, not terms, in division. So if you think about fractions, which is what we're going to be dealing with, let's say I have one-third times three-fourths. In multiplication of fractions, I can cancel, because in multiplication, the things that I multiply are called factors. So I can cancel three into three, one, three into three, one. I multiply across, I get one times one is one, one times four is four. Fine. If I was adding these, one-third plus three-fourths, I hope you know that I cannot cancel the threes. Addition-subtraction is a whole different process. I'd have to go get common denominators. I can't cancel these, and if you notice, when I add or subtract things, they're called terms. This is a term, that's a term. We won't do this, we'll do this later when we add fractions. So now I'm back to here. I see it's a fraction with one numerator, one denominator. I want to simplify. I can't do it just like I do this one. I can't cancel these x squareds. I can't cancel 5 into 30 and 5 into 25 because I have terms. Term, 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 term. But I want to cancel. So what I do is I factor everything I can, which means I change terms into factors so I can cancel. So I look at my numerator and I have to do the self-talk and ask myself three questions. Is it greatest con an example of greatest common factor, difference of two squares, or a trinomial? Well, hopefully you see there's no prompt greatest common factor. There's no number that will divide into each term except for one. It can't be difference of two squares, because difference of two squares means I have two terms. I have three terms, so that's out. I look to see if I can factor this trinomial. This has no coefficient in front, so it should be an easy one. I have x and x. I look at the sign of the third term. That tells me my signs are different. I look to the middle. I don't have to look to the middle because it's different. So different is just different. Then I write down my factors of 30. 1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 5 times 6. Then when I have no coefficient in front, I ask myself, or just a 1 coefficient in front, I ask myself, which pairs do I add or subtract to get this coefficient in the middle? You don't see any coefficient, that means a 1 is understood. So which pair do I add or subtract to get a 1? It's got to be 6 and 5. Then I have different signs, it matters where I put it. I'm looking for a plus 1. So I'm going to take my positive 6, which is my larger one, put it with the sign of the middle term because a plus 6 and a minus 5 is going to give me that plus 1. I check by FOIL. x times x is x squared. Minus 5x plus 6x gives me plus 1x. My last terms, I get negative 30. I've got it factored right. I look at my denominator, and I have to ask myself, do that self-talk, and say, well, which is it? Is it greatest common factor, difference of two squares, or a trinomial. Well, hopefully you see it's not a trinomial. Tri means three. I only have two terms. I can't factor it like this. 
So then I go, well, could it be common fact, greatest common factor, or difference of two squares? If you think it's greatest common, then you say to yourself, all right, well, what's common? Is there a number or letter that can divide evenly into each term? Well, there's no common x, there's no common 5, I don't see a common number. Is it difference of two squares? Yes. So I factor it. I get x and x, difference of two squares, we have different signs. I take the square root of 25, which is 5 and 5. Now, I've got factor, 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 factor. I can cancel. Anything divided by itself is 1. So I am left with x plus 6 divided by x plus 5. Then I look at my answer just to see if I can cancel or factor anything else. Here's the question you ask yourself. If there are factors, I can. If there are terms, I cannot. So, and this is just the first one we're doing. I should know that that's a term. This is a factor all unto itself. This is a term. This is a term. Together, I could consider it as a factor. So I cannot cancel my axis. All right, let's try another one. Let's say I have one like this. 4x minus 24 divided by x squared minus 8x plus 12. The first thing I have to know, which is a really big deal, is that I can't start canceling. I can't cancel the 4 and the 8. I can't cancel the 12 into the 24. I can't cancel the x's because I've got terms all over the place. Term, 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 term. So, I see if I can factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and change everything to factors. I look at my numerator. Hopefully you see it's not a trinomial. Trinomial means three terms. I have two terms, so it can't be a trinomial. So then I go, well, could it be difference of two squares or greatest common factor? I look at this and I go, well, can't be difference of two squares. The 4 looks good, but I can't take the square root of 24 evenly. And actually, to be difference of two squares, this would have to be a square. So it's greatest common factor. I have 4 times x minus 6. I factor my denominator. Now, the factoring is usually a little easier when it's inside a problem because I'm hoping one of these will be an x minus 6. So I have x x. Have to get your signs right. A plus tells me the signs in my answer are the same. Plus, plus, or minus, minus. I look to the middle, no matter what happens, this is minus, minus. Again, I have no coefficient in front, except for 1, so this should be easy. 1 times 12, 2 times 6, or 3 times 4. When there is no coefficient other than 1 in the first term, I can ask this question. Which pair do I add or subtract to get an 8? So, I can see it's not 1 and 12, it's not 3 and 4. Oh, it's 6 and 2. I check by FOIL. x times x is x squared. Minus 6, minus 2 gives me minus 8. I get my plus 12. So now, things that are multiplied are called factored. There's really a times here. So I have factor, 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 factor. My x minus 6's go to 1, so I am left with 4 over x minus 2. Now I can't guess, I got to know. The next question is, can I cancel my 2 and my 4? If either one of them is a term, I cannot. So the answer is no, I cannot cancel this 2 into the 4 because this 2 is a term. That's my answer. I think we do need to do a couple more. So here we go. I have to simplify this fraction. Again, I am not allowed to cancel my x into my x squared. I'm not allowed to go 3 into 9 and 3 into 24 because I have terms. Term, 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 term. In division, I can only cancel factors, not terms. Factors are things we multiply. Terms are things we add or subtract. I look at my numerator. I have to ask myself, is it an example of greatest common factor, difference of two squares, or a trinomial? 
Hopefully, again, you see it's not a trinomial. Trinomial is three terms. So is it an example of difference of two squares or greatest common factor? I mean, it could be prime when we don't factor it, but right now, is it greatest common factor or difference of two squares? Well, it can't be difference of two squares. If you remember, difference has to have a minus. So once I say a plus sign, there's no way it's difference of two squares. So there's only one left. Could it be greatest common factor? Yes. So I factor out an 8. Whoops, my pen just broke. We'll have to switch. So I factor out an 8. I got 8 times x plus 3. I look at my denominator. It's not a trinomial. It's only two terms. So is it greatest common factor or difference of two squares? Great. Difference of two squares. So I get x plus 3 x minus 3. I've got factor, 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 factor. My x plus 3's cancel. So now I'm left with 8 over x minus 3. Let's try another one. Let's say I have x squared plus 6x divided by x squared plus 4x minus 12. So I think you're okay with the denominator. We'll do that first this time, because at this point of the course, this is the one most students have trouble recognizing. So we'll do the denominator. I'll factor this. No coefficient in front should be an easy one. XX. Minus, you got to know that means different. It's either 1 times 12, 2 times 6, or 3 times 4. I have no coefficient in front except for 1. So which pair do I add or subtract to get a 4? Got to be 6 and 2. I take the bigger number, put it with the sign of the middle term. So my 6 goes here, my 2 goes here. Because a plus 6 and a minus 2 will give me that plus 4. But I'll check by FOIL. x times x is x squared. Minus 2x plus 6x gives me plus 4x. I get minus 12. This is the one that students have the most trouble recognizing. They try to factor it like a trinomial. I can't factor this like a trinomial. It's not a trinomial. I've got two terms. So I look and I go, was well, it difference of two squares? Hmm, have a plus. There's no way it's difference of two squares. Once I think it could be common, then I do the self-talk and say to myself, well, what's common? Oh, an X. So for some reason, students have trouble recognizing greatest common factor when it's a letter. I can factor out an x. Remember, it is called greatest common factor, so I do look to see if I can factor out an x squared, but there's only one here, so I can't. I take this greatest common factor, I divide it into each term. x and x squared, x. My x's cancel, I get plus 6. Now, I've got factor, 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 factor. I can cancel my x plus 6's. So now I'm left with x divided by x minus 2. Then I ask that last question. Can I f cancel those x's? If either one of those x's is a term, I'm not allowed to cancel. This x is a term. Not allowed to cancel. That's my answer. We'll do one more. Let's say I have one like this. Um, let's see, 5x minus 25 divided by 3x squared minus 11x minus 20. Hopefully you'll recognize the numerator as common factor. So I get 5 times x minus 5. So now the factoring should go faster because I'm hoping that one of these denominators should be x minus 5. So let's see. Now this one has a coefficient in front. So this is factoring by trial and error. So I have x, x, plus, minus. I should have left more space. So now this has to be 1 and 3. So I'll put a 3 there. There's my 1. It's going to be 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. 
well, I wouldn't even try 1 in 21st. I mean, nothing would cancel. I wouldn't try 2 in 10. I want to try 1 with a 5 first. So I'm going to try 4 and 5. I put it in if it works fine. If I don't, I switch spots. So let's put our 5 here. We'll put our 4 here. Have to check by FOIL. When I check my outers, I'm going to get minus 15x. I check my inners, I get plus 4x. I do get minus 11x. Perfect. Multiply my last, I get negative 20. My x minus 5 is good to 1. So now I am left with 5 divided by 3x plus 4. I think we should do just two more of these because I, so many students find these difficult. And if you can handle this, then you can handle the next topic and honestly the whole course. So this is a crucial thing. So I look at this and I see it's a fraction. It's got one numerator, one denominator. I got to simplify it. I got to remember that in division, I can only cancel factors, not terms. So I would say the biggest mistake, and that's for the people that don't do their homework, they cancel the 2a squareds, and they go 7 to 7, 1, 7 into 14, 2, they cancel these a's. you got to know, to simplify a fraction, you got to factor and cancel. So I look at my numerator, and I have to ask myself, is it greatest common factor, difference of two squares, or a trinomial? Again, hopefully you see it's not a trinomial to two terms. It can't be a trinomial. So I ask if it's greatest common factor or difference of two squares. Well, again, huh, I see a plus. There's no way it's difference of two squares. So now it's likely, possibly, a greatest common factor. Greatest common factor has one set of parentheses. So don't automatically put down your two sets. It'll mess you up. I got to check numbers and letters. So I think you'll all be okay with factoring out a 2. But then you can't forget to check your letters. I see I have a common A, so I have to also factor out the A. Can't factor it out an A squared because it's called greatest because the A squared doesn't exist here. So my greatest common factor is 2A. Again, to get the insides, I take my 2A, divide it into each term. My 2's cancel, a into a squared, a. 2a into 14a. So again, what I'm doing is dividing 2a here and 2a here. So 2 into 14 is 7. My a's cancel. So I get plus 7. I'm over here. This is my trinomial. So I have two sets of parentheses. I have a and a. A minus means plus minus. I got a coefficient of 2, so it's trial and error. My only choice is 2 and 1. I put in my 2, I put in my 1. My only choice is 7 and 1. So the only way you can get it wrong is if you put it in the wrong spots. When I FOIL, and you have to check by FOIL, it's part of the process, I want to get a plus 13. So I put my 7 here, I put my 1 here. I check by FOIL. I get minus 14a, I get plus 1a, I get minus 13a. So now, do you see that I'm off by a sign? I want plus 13 and I got a minus 13. So if we're off by a sign, all we do is change the signs. This becomes plus, that becomes minus. Now, I have plus 14 minus 1 gives me plus 13. So it's a little messy. I'll write it over. 2a times a plus 7. We have over 2a minus 1 times a plus 7. Now my a plus 7s cancel. I'm left with 2a over 2a minus 1. I look and I go, well, can I cancel those two a's? If one of them is a term, I cannot. Remember, I can only cancel factors, not terms, and division. So, I cannot cancel my two A's. That's the answer. I mean, eventually you'll see. We're going to get one where the answer is yes. All right. I said we'll do one more. So, let's say I do this one. 
9x squared minus 49 divided by 6x squared minus 11x minus 7. So I would say do what's easier first. So to me, I look at my numerator, and to me, I know what it is. Do you see again, it's not a trinomial. It's only two terms. So is it greatest common factor or difference of two squares? If you think it's greatest common, then you go to yourself, well, what's common? There's no x common. Hey, 7 doesn't divide into each, neither does 9. It can't be greatest common. Difference of two squares. Difference of two squares is going to be 3x minus 7, 3x plus 7. I factor my trinomial. I have a coefficient in front, so it's trial on error. I have x, x, plus, minus. I only have one choice, 7 and 1. I don't know. I might have to change the signs. Now, it's either 6 and 1 or 2 and 3. Why would I try 6 and 1 first? Nothing would cancel. So the odds are I'm going to try 2 and 3 first. Doesn't work? Switch spots. So I want to get an 11. So I'm not going to put my, my um, well, I could. But let's say I put my 3 here, my 2 here. I check my outers. I get minus 14x. I check my inners. I get plus 3x. I do get minus 11x. Perfect. If I didn't, I would switch my pairs. I multiply my last, I get negative 7. They cancel to 1. So I'm left with 3x plus 7 over 2x plus 1. Move it up. That's it.